Hi guys, I'm Mikal from Prague ICU. And I'm Marek. Today we are going to show you how to insert a VA ECMO. Everything is ready. We have here an X-ray, a TOE probe, a vascular ultrasound and our patient. It is important to understand that there is a difference between VA ECMO insertion in patients with cardiogenic shock and during ECPR. Both procedures have their own specificities, which we are going to show you. For the procedure, we have here two sterile trays. On the first one, there is a big sterile fenestrated drape, syringes, scissors, four large clamps, sterile cover and gel, gauze pads with chlorhexidine and sterile gauze. On the second tray, we have all the components for insertion of VA ECMO. VA ECMO cannula is shorter than the venous one. Its size is usually between 15 to 19 French. They measure between 20 to 25 centimeters and contain an introducer. The larger venous cannula is usually approximately 35 to 40 centimeters long and their size is between 21 to 25 French. Venous drainage cannulas have multiple side holes at several different levels and also one large lumen at the end. In contrast, the arterial cannula has just the terminal return holes at the tip. The ECMO cannulation tray includes an introducer needle, wire and a set of dilators with different sizes. 12, 14, 16 and 18 French. For larger venous cannulas we can use a special kit with even larger dilators. What is not part of the cannulation set is the Amplet Super Stiff Introducer Wire, which we like to use as it gives us stability during insertion of large bore cannulas. We can perform the cannulation just with the components from the provided ECMO set, but what we prefer is to start the procedure of ECMO insertion with these seven French sheets. The first recommendation for the ECPR ECMO insertion is to prepare an another extra sterile tray for the vascular ultrasound even before the patient comes to the ICU. In normal circumstances, we insert the venous and arterial cannulae in different groins, but in this video manual, we will have to insert both cannulas in the right groin. Our second recommendation for ECPR is to minimize the time loss caused by prolonged skin disinfection. In these scenarios, the circulants undress the patient and then splash the cannulation sites extensively with disinfection. For an elective procedure, you can spare longer time with a thorough manual disinfection. Then you can put the large fenestrated drape on. In case you use an x-ray, an assistant will help you putting on the sterile x-ray cover. For the initial vessel cannulation, we will use the above mentioned 7 French rigid sheets that might be helpful in securing the cannulation sites in patients with difficult vessel access in the groin. Some operators use for the puncture just the introducer needle, but we prefer to use both needle and syringe. We use the 5 ml syringe as it is small and offers great maneuverability. All cannulations need to be performed under ultrasound, as this approach minimizes the risk of complications. Our next important recommendation is to focus on a correct technique of cannulation, especially in groin cannulations. Try to approach the skin not at 60 degrees, but at 30, max 45 degrees angle. This approach will facilitate further dilations and insertions of the large bore cannulas. After puncturing the femoral vein, insert the guide wire. Make the superficial incision at the entry point of the wire as it will facilitate the passage of the sheath. Avoid bending and kinking of the wire. Remove the wire with the introducer and flush the lumen appropriately. 
Then continue with insertion of the arterial sheath using the same approach. In a non-ECPR scenario, it is advisable to insert the anti-grape reperfusion cannula at this time. This end is attached to the sideboard of the arterial ECMO cannula. Reperfusion cannula is always inserted under ultrasound into the superficial femoral artery. Once it is positioned inside the artery, the introducer is pulled out and the cap is attached. It prevents bleeding and aspirating the air. For the procedure, we have everything prepared by side. Introduce a needle for reperfusion cannula, wire, and the cannula itself. Then we have here the ECMO arterial cannula and venous cannula. A set of dilators with the different sizes and a scalpel. As we have mentioned before, we can use the introducer wire, which is a part of the ECMO introducer set. But as you can see, this wire is very soft and floppy. Therefore, in the majority of cases, we prefer to use the Amplat Super Stiff Introducer wire as it gives you more stability and prevents the wire kinking during insertion of large bore cannulas. Ultrasound is always used for the insertion of a reperfusion cannula. We recommend placing the reperfusion cannula close to the arterial ECMO cannula to prevent thrombosis in the segment between them. Once you enter the superficial femoral artery, insert the wire. Make a superficial incision at the entry point of the wire, which will facilitate the passage of the cannula. Again, avoid bending and kinking of the wire. Then remove the wire and the introducer. Unclamp the cannula for a while and flush the lumen. Then apply the cap on top. During ECPR, leave the reperfusion cannula insertion till the end of the procedure once the circulation is restored. When we are ready for the cannulation, we can proceed with insertion of the Amplatz introducer wire. It's a long one, measuring up to 260 cm. Before inserting the venous cannula, we always need to confirm the position of the wire in the SVC using X-ray and or TOE. If we are happy with the position of the wire, we can remove the 7 French sheet. Another tip is to make an extensive superficial incision before dilating the cannula. This is of utmost importance. Then you can start with dilation. Carefully, dilators one by one are used. Start with 12 French and finish with 18 or 21 French dilators. Avoid any bending and kinking of the wire. Always try to insert the dilator and at the same time move with the wire in and out. Another operator ensures that the wire is stretched. Apply the gauze pads to minimize the blood loss. Always insert the instruments under the same flat angle as the initial puncture is done. After the final dilation, flush the ecmovenous cannula and insert it. Then remove the wire with the introducer and clamp the cannula. Insert the cannula to the desired position in the right atrium and confirm it with TE. Mid esophageal bicapital view of the right atrium showing a cannula extending from the inferior vena cava to the junction of the right atrium 
and superior vena cava. Then continue with the insertion of an arterial ECMO cannula. Insert the stiff wire over the sheet and confirm the position of the wire in the descending aorta under X-ray or transesophageal echo. Again, make an extensive superficial incision as this will help you with a comfortable insertion of the large bore dilators and cannula. Then gradually dilate the tract. Finally, insert the arterial ECMO cannula. Insert the cannula not beyond this groove. Remove the wire with an introducer and clamp the cannula. If you have time, secure both cannulas in the groin before starting the ECMO. This is obviously not the case uh, of ECPR, during which we prefer starting the ECMO bypass as soon as possible. In this scenario, we need to hold tight both cannulas, especially the arterial one, which can be easily pushed out by the blood flow. Now close all clamps on the both blue and red lines on the primed ECMO circuit. Open the table tray. Inside, you can find the plastic clamps, but we prefer the surgical clamps over the plastic ones. Clamp the blue and red lines close to the clamp symbols. The sterile sections of the red and blue can now be placed in the sterile area and connected to ECMO cannula. The patient lines are individually cut before they are connected to the cannula in the patient. Blue to blue, venous to venous and red to red, arterial to arterial lines are connected. Connect tubing with cannula during continuous saline dribbling. Double check that there is no air bubble in the circuit. Continue with the second cannula. Again, carefully double check that there is no air bubble in the circuit, especially in the arterial line. Now you can start the ECMO circuit. Set the speed to 1500 revolutions per minute and unclamp all four clamps on the patient's side. Then unclamp the venous line and finally slowly the arterial line on the ECMO side. Now the ECMO flow goes up. To connect the reperfusion cannula, clamp the arterial line before and after the side port. Open the clamp on the reperfusion cannula to flush it and attach it to the ECMO arterial line. Then you can unclamp the line. Now we will show you how you can secure the cannula. For the ECMO lines, we make two holding sutures by the side of the cannula And then we fix it through the plastic tightening strap. Similarly, we secure the second ECMO line using the same approach. If not performed earlier, do not forget to secure the reperfusion cannula as well as it can fall out easily.
Then secure the ECMO cannula to the skin more distally using plastic tube holders. Put four separate nodes here. And then tie the tube holder like this while making the last knot. Finally, plastic tightening straps should be applied to all remaining line connections. Today we showed you how to perform VA ECMO cannulation. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more educational videos from Praga ICU.